Today, I'm going to talk about interest rate risk in the banking book, which has specific regulatory requirements for all banks to follow. And I'm, I'm going to address those specific requirements. Interest rate risk has been a risk that banks have always managed right from the very start of banking, of modern day banking. I want to give you an overview of the concept first, and then we'll get right into the into the into the regulatory compliance aspects of it. First of all, what is interest rate risk in general? As I said, it's a risk that all banks are exposed to when they undertake business as usual banking. Because when banks originate customer loans and accept customer liabilities, the terms to maturity and the interest rate bases of those products on an individual and on an aggregate basis don't match. So that gives rise to a sensitivity of the bank's key revenue stream, which is net interest income. As interest rates change, the, both the interest rates that a bank is exposed to itself and the market-wide interest rates, for example, the central bank's base rate, then the amount of net interest income that the bank would be reporting will change with it. So this sensitivity is the key interest rate risk that we are referring to. And so this concept of interest rate risk in the banking book refers to this exposure as measured, sorry, as observed and managed on the banking book. That is distinct from the trading book. We won't really be talking about trading book interest rate risk in this course because that is the capital requirements for that are addressed under fundamental review of the trading book rules, which is an element of Basel III. And so that drives the capital requirements for a trading book. For a banking book, which is the customer balance sheet of a bank, we have to follow the IRRBB rules of the regulator, which have been guided by, again, Basel III or Bar Bank for International Settlements requirements. Here's the regulatory framework for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the regulatory framework for it. It's a pillar two risk, okay? Capital add-on for interest rate risk exposure that was deemed material would be a pillar 2A capital buffer add-on. If you remember from our capital stack from lecture one, it's a pillar 2A capital add-on. So that's how it fits within the regulatory framework. 